Hey besties, it's Sarah. Welcome back to my channel. If you've been following my Sarah Ween calendar at all, you might know that today was supposed to be book binding video, but unfortunately I'm going to have to postpone that to early November because I bought all the supplies and I've been practicing and trying to figure out book binding, but it's just taking some extra time and Sarah Ween is very time consuming. And so I just want that video to come out really well. And so we're going to push that forward a bit. And so instead today we're going to be doing a horror audit. I did a video last week where I read the best horror books of all time, according to booktubers. I basically watched like 30 booktubers recommend horror books and I counted up the ones that showed up the most and I read those but unfortunately I gave all those books two stars and so now I'm just sitting here trying to figure out what do I enjoy in a horror book because there have been horror books that I've given good ratings but there's been so many that I have not so today we are going to sleuth our way into figuring out what I enjoy. I went through the entirety of my Goodreads history and I found that I have read 58 horror books. So let's go ahead and rank these. We have five categories. The first of these is... We did it, we did it, Joe. This is basically the top tier, the cream of the crop. We did it, we finally like a book. These are the horror books that just something about them made me love them, I gave them five stars. And then the next category is... You were good. I'm waiting for you to be great. And this category is for books that I felt like had a lot of promise, like parts of them I was enjoying so much, but then there was something about the execution that made me not rate them five stars. Next we have... It's really not that bad. It just needs a little... <laughs> shaping. These are books that are definitely not bad. I just didn't personally enjoy them that much. There were a lot of things that I wish that were different about them and I didn't have the best time reading them but I didn't have a horrible time either. They're kind of just middle of the road. Okay and then we have... I'm not gagging. This is specifically books that everyone else seems to love but I'm not impressed. I'm not enjoying them. Something about them made me rate them really low. They were like two-ish stars and I just did not have a good time. And then the worst category is... Good morning. Oh, good morning. <laughs> <laughs> Not you. You can choke. This category was reserved for books that I absolutely hated. Like I truly thought they were horrendous and I don't know why anyone likes them. And then the last category that's kind of separate from all of these is DNF. I did want to include the books that I've DNF'd so that way you guys know that I have read them and didn't really like them and wasn't really interested in continuing. So that way, number one, you don't recommend them to me. And number two, you know that they just like kind of weren't my thing. All right, here we go. We got 58 books. The first one is Come Closer by Sarah Grand, which is a possession story. And I actually really enjoyed this. So I'm going to go ahead and put that in. We did it, Joe. I do think I rated it four stars, but I really, really liked it. I actually don't know why I rated it four stars because in comparison to a bunch of other horror books, I genuinely loved it. Okay, the next book is Doll Bones by Holly Black. This is a middle grade. I don't fully remember what this is about. I know it's like a haunted doll and the kids are like going on a trip or something. It was fine. I'm gonna put it in, it's not bad, it just needs a little shaping. I remember thinking it had spooky vibes and if I was a kid, I would have loved it, but adult Sarah thought it was just okay. The next book, if you like it, please shield your eyes because I did not like this and this is Off Season by Jack Ketchum. I'm gonna put this into Not You, You Can Choke. I really, really did not like this. This is about a group of people that like rent a house like a cabin in the middle of the woods and then it gets overtaken by these cannibals and it's kind of like a fight to the death as they're trying to get away from these cannibals. It's very gory but I, I just thought it was boring and I didn't like the characterization of like the women in it. I felt like it was like really sexist. It was written a really long time ago. I think it was written like the 80s but I just was not live laugh loving so I'm sorry it could choke because I don't I don't like it. Then we have The Ruins by Scott Smith. If you saw my vlog last week I read this. I'm gonna put this in I'm not gagging. It was fine. It was not really my thing. It's about these people that are in Mexico and they go to these ruins and there's like this thing there that keeps them there and they have to get away. I don't really know how to talk about this book without spoiling it because it's such a stupid ass concept, but I will say that the writing wasn't bad. So that's why I'm going to put it in. I'm not gagging because it's like not the worst thing I've ever read, but I just, I wasn't, it wasn't for me. It dragged on, it was boring. No One Gets Out Alive by Adam Neville is also going to go in I'm Not Gagging. This is a horror novel that a lot of people love. It's a haunted house story about this girl who's really poor and she has to live in this like share house. When she gets there, she finds out that the room that she's staying in is haunted, but she can't leave because she doesn't have enough money to leave. And then there's a bunch of like bad stuff going on in the house. And it's kind of one of those, like, are the ghosts worse or the people worse? Like, her landlord is kind of, like, fucked up. And it was just so long. It felt like the Lord of the Rings of horror. Like, it just did not need to be as long as it was. I just, it was boring. It was really boring. Head Full of Ghosts by Paul Tremblay. 
is also going to go and I'm not getting. I do need to give a warning. This is gonna be a pretty negative video until we figure out what I like because the point of this is that I don't like a lot of horror. So don't be surprised when the bottom two tiers are just full of books. Like, please do not hate me, throw tomatoes at me, please, please, please. But anyway, Head Full of Ghosts is a possession story but I did not like it as much as I liked to come closer. The main character is a little girl and her older sister is maybe possessed by a demon, they're not sure. And for some reason, the way her family decides to deal with this is to go on a reality show. And so camera crews come to the house and start filming what's going on. And you kind of have to decide whether or not you think the older sister is actually possessed or if it's like, you know, a mental illness or something. I don't know, I just thought it was boring. I don't really like Paul Tremblay, if I'm being honest. There's another Paul Tremblay here on the list. I'll just go ahead and get rid of this. The Cabin at the End of the World, I'm gonna put that in. Not you, you can choke. <laughs> I didn't like it. I did not like it. I'm sorry. I thought it was, I thought it was boring. It was really boring. It's about this gay couple that goes to stay in a cabin in the woods with their adopted daughter and these people show up and basically tell them that if they don't sacrifice one of the people in the family, then the world is going to end. Kind of a cool concept because I thought it was going to be like, you know, what's that, that movie where like the strangers like break into the house? Is it called The Strangers? I don't know. But I thought it was going to be like that where it was going to be like a home invasion kind of book. And so I was really excited to read it. But then when I actually read it, it is just kind of weird. And it's just a long, boring conversation for the entire book. So it was not really my thing. Alice by Christine Henry is also going in i'm not gagging i'm not gagging this is like an alternative retelling of alice in wonderland where she is put in a mental hospital and then she breaks out with the mad hatter and they have to like hunt down this like sword or something i actually thought it was more fantasy than horror but if you look it up on goodreads everybody classifies it as horror so that's why i'm including it on this list but i definitely would say it's more of like a dark fantasy up next we finally have some good news we have brother by anya alborn i read this actually last week for a reading vlog and i actually really enjoy this i'm gonna put it in you are good i'm waiting for you to be great because i loved so many aspects of this book like i generally thought it was really good when i first started it i thought it was gonna be like a four or five star book but then the further i got in it it just didn't really go in the direction that i wanted but i still really thoroughly enjoyed it i loved that it was kind of a wild ride the whole time it's about this family of serial killers our main character is a guy named michael and he hasn't really fit in with his family he doesn't really enjoy the murdering and he ends up meeting a girl in town that he started to have feelings for and so he kind of wants to leave his family behind and it's just kind of about what goes on with that and his older brother is kind of evil honestly my only issue is that i just thought the ending could have been better like i just wanted some different twists the next book is the ballad of black tom i'm gonna go ahead and put this in it's not bad it just needs a little shaping this book is not bad by any means like a lot of people love this book and for me it just wasn't really my thing it's a retelling or like reimagining of a lovecraft story to kind of combat his like racism that is like very prevalent in his work and so victor laval lavalli laval he went in and he rewrote it to make this one minor character have like a better story but i'm not familiar with the original story and so i just didn't really enjoy this it's i don't I, in general i don't really love lovecraftian horror and I know a lot about Lovecraftian horror because in college I took a film class that focused on that. Like we watched a bunch of movies and applied like Lovecraftian tropes to them and like wrote papers about it. But in general, I'm just not a huge Lovecraft girl. So I didn't, I didn't like it, but I didn't hate it either. Next we have The Historian and I read this so long ago. I think I read this in like 2018. I'm going to put it in... It's not bad, it just needs a little shaping. I do think I may have rated this two stars, but I remember it having very good vibes. It's kind of a Dracula retelling. I don't fully remember the plot. I know that there is a girl, is it a girl? Anyway, a person who is in a university and they find like these old documents like saying that Dracula is real and then Dracula shows up. I don't know. I remember it just having good fall vibes. The Hunger by Alma Katsu. I vaguely remember reading this. This is like a Donner Party retelling about these people. They're like traveling out west and then they have to eat each other. And I think there's like zombies or something. And I'm going to put this in. It's not bad. It just needs a little shaping because I remember liking a lot of stuff about it. But feeling like some of the character arcs were like rushed and that the cast of characters was too big. But in general... I had a good time with it. Into the Drowning Deep by Mira Grant is a cult favorite. Unfortunately, I'm going to put it in. It's not bad, it just needs a little shaping because I did not love it as much as everyone else. And I am very sorry about that. This one is about a crew that goes to the Mariana Trench to study mermaids and the mermaids end up being evil. And I don't know if I like ocean 
horror. I, I, I think there were parts of it that I liked, but I, other parts that I didn't. So I think I rated it like three stars when I read it. Unburied Carol by Josh Mallerman was a DNF because I went in thinking this this was a horror and it definitely was more of a Western. So I don't really know why people classify it as horror. It's about this woman named Carol who has this ability to like, she like dies and goes into like a coma all the time. I don't really know how else to explain it. Yeah, I'm doing a horrible job doing this. I feel like my brain is like AOL dial up right now. The Devil of Non King. This would either go in, it's not bad, it just needs a little shaping or I'm not gagging. I think I'm gonna put it in, it's not bad, it just needs a little shaping because there were a lot of aspects of this that I really liked, but I thought the overall execution left me wanting. I think I rated it like two stars. It's about this woman named Grey who is very obsessed with the Non King Massacre. And she goes to Japan in search of this like lost footage, which kind of reminded me of like The Ring. I learned a lot about Non King in general when I read this, cause I honestly did not really know about that from history. I feel like American schools don't do a good job of teaching Asian history. And so it was interesting for like the history aspects, but the actual horror itself, I, I don't know. To be honest, I wasn't gagging, but I'm not gonna put it in the lower sections because I kinda wanna reserve those for books that I like really didn't like. Up next, we have Foe by Ian Reed. I think I'm gonna put this in, hmm, you were, mm, I'm between these two categories. I think I gave this book three stores. I'm gonna put it there. I'm gonna put it in the middle because I do remember liking this, but not loving it. It's about this married couple this like government official shows up and says that the husband has to go to the moon after he comes back from going to the moon or he, before he goes to the moon, the there's like a robot replacement that comes and he's very freaked out. But I don't know. It has to do with like androids or something. Don't ask me. Kingdom of Needle and Bone. This is also by Mira Grant slash Shawnee McGuire, which by the way, they're the same person if you didn't know that. I did not like this. I think it gave it one star. So I'm gonna put that under not you, you can choke. I think it's a pandemic novella. And I just know that I gave it one star on Goodreads. So we're gonna put it down in the you can choke. I'm thinking of ending things by Ann Reed. I'm gonna put this in, I'm not gagging. I'm so sorry. I know this is a very beloved one, but I did not like the ending of this. The first half was interesting and creepy and I was getting into it. But then the second half, I am not gagging. It, the reveal, it was bad. I did not like that. I'm so sorry if you liked that. The Luminous Dead, I'm gonna put this in. It's not bad. It just needs a little shaping. This is a cave space horror. It's about this woman who goes like spelunking and she's like working for this organization and she's on this like expedition. And she has to like put this suit on her body that basically like sinks up to her organs and whatnot. And as she's down in the caves, like creepy stuff starts happening. The concept of this book was so good. And when I was reading it, I was reading it at night and I was getting really creeped out. And I loved so many things about it. Cause I do think I might like space horror, but I think the execution of this was weird. And there was like a random romance in it and I was not, Live off loving that. My Best Friend's Exorcism by Grady Hendrix is gonna go in We Did It Joe, cause I really enjoyed this. I feel like it was very campy, it was very fun. It was, it was a silly goofy time, but also had like some anxiety and like tension in it that I really enjoyed. It's about this girl in the 80s and her best friend gets possessed by a demon and she's the only one that believes this. And so she's trying to figure out how to help her friend the entire book. Wilder Girls is gonna go into DNF. Could not tell you what it's about because I did DNF it and I just wanted to put that there because I don't like young adult. So if you're thinking about recommending me something, do not recommend young adult. Rules for Vanishing by Kate Alice Marshall, which is a YA book, but I read this back when I liked YA. I'm gonna put this in, you are good. I'm waiting for you to be great because I remember really enjoying it thinking it was creepy. It's like about this girl whose sister goes missing and then she has to go on this like haunted path. And as she's on the path, she's like play this game. There's all these rules. And if you break the rules, then you'll like die. And I remember thinking there were like too many characters in this book. And so some of the character deaths, I just didn't care about. The Southern Book Club's Guide to Staying Vampires. I'm gonna put this in. Mm, I did like it, but I didn't love it. So I'm gonna put it in You Were Good, I'm Waiting For You To Be Great because I gave it four stars. The first half of the book was so boring, but then the second half really picked up and I really enjoyed it. I think the reason I gave it four stars was because I've never had a book change my opinion halfway through because I think in the first half, I was gonna give it like two stars and then it got a lot better, so it kept going. It's about these older women in, I think it's the 90s, they have a book club and then there is a new guy that moves to their neighborhood and they find out that he's a vampire. And so all these like older women are trying to like, 
get rid of him because he's like a really bad vampire guy. Grady Hendrix is known for being a silly goofy fun time. Up next we have Bird Box. I'm gonna go ahead and put this in We Did It Joe. I really liked this when I read it. I know it's a much older horror but I remember giving it like four or five stars and putting it on my favorites list when I read it in 2018. It is a post-apocalyptic book where you can't go outside without a blindfold because there's something out there. It like drives you to madness if you see it. Pet Cemetery by Stephen King. If you saw my video last week, you're gonna know where this is going. This is going into, I'm not gagging. I am not gagging. I do not get the hype. I do not get, I do not get it. It's about this guy, his family moves to this new house near a highway and they have this area behind their house called the Pet Cemetery where like people like bury their pets. Spooky stuff starts to happen, but not until the last like 15% of the book. It's a very slow book. It's mostly a book about grief. True Crime by Samantha Kolsnick. I'm gonna put this in. It's not bad, it just needs a little shaping. I think I gave this two stars, but not because I think it's actually bad, but because it's just not really for me. It's a very gritty book. It's about this girl whose mother abuses her and then her and her brother kill their mother and they go on a road trip where they just like murder a bunch of people. I think it was just like, I didn't like the writing style and I didn't enjoy it. And it was a very short book, but it just, it just wasn't, I wasn't a fan. Up next we have Tender is the Flesh. I'm gonna put this in, I'm not gagging. This is another beloved book by many. It's set in a distant future where animals have gotten this disease where humans can't eat them anymore. So instead of becoming vegetarians, the human race has decided that they're just gonna eat humans because that definitely seems like something we would do in our capitalistic society. I really liked the concept of what this book was about, but I thought the overall execution could have been better. It was a little boring and I didn't love the ending, like the way that it goes with the character, I don't know. And I wasn't really as grossed out by it by other people. It was kind of just like, it was fine. I'm sorry, I'm getting very tired. I didn't really think about the fact that I was gonna describe the plot of 58 books. Okay, Camp Slaughter by Sergi Gomez. I'm gonna put this in, not you, you can choke because this book was so bad. It's a slasher book about this guy that lives in the woods and whenever people go like, camping or like stay out there, he kills them. And I did not like this book because number one, the writing was horrible. And number two, I didn't like the representation of the, the killer. Up next, we have The Year of the Witching. I'm gonna go ahead and put this in DNF. I'm not super in to like Puritan stories. They're kind of not not super my thing. Then we've got The Hollow Places by T. King Fisher. We're gonna put that in. We did it, Joe, because we did. We did in fact do it, Joe. I loved that book. This woman goes to help her uncle. He has like a museum of oddities and he goes away for a little bit and then she like finds a portal in the wall that leads her to like this crazy world and it was spooky, it was ooky, it was funny. I loved it. I feel like T. King Fisher is also one of those authors who is always in the mood for a silly goofy time. Up next, Next we have The Patient by Jasper DeWitt. I also absolutely love this book, five stars. Amazing, amazing, we did it, Joe. This is about a guy who works as a psychiatrist and he goes to work at this mental hospital and he finds out that there is this guy that's been living there since he was like a child because he always said that he could like see monsters and so his parents put him in this hospital and now he's like in his 40s and no one's allowed to treat him because everyone that treats him like kills themselves and so our main character is just convinced that he's going to be the doctor that's going to cure this guy and so he starts treating him and it is so creepy i loved it i loved the ending i loved everything about the patient by jasper dewitt if you know any books that feel like this please let me know because that was my all-time favorite. I loved it. The Whisper Man by Alex Knorr. This one could be classified as a thriller. I feel like it's kind of a mixture. It's got kind of a spooky vibe, but it's also like a mystery detective situation. I'm going to put this in. Um, it's not bad. It just needs a little shaping because I don't fully remember what it's about. I do believe it's like a kid gets kidnapped or there's murders, a serial killer of some kind, like the Whisper Man. I don't know. There's ghosts in it. It was fine. I don't know. I don't really remember it. So I'm just going to put it in that middle category. All right. The next book is Catherine House. Going to put this in. I'm not gagging. I am not one of the people who gets this book. I don't like weird lit. I don't like books that are weird. It's about this girl going to this like prestigious I, university I think it is and it's like this really weird school where weird stuff happens I don't know I don't feel like explaining it more I just didn't like it and if you know this book just know that I don't like weird lit the only good Indians by Stephen Graham Jones I'm gonna put this in you are good I'm waiting for you to be great because I really loved the first half of this book but the second half was just okay so this group of Native Americans and like 10 years ago they were like hunting on their reserve and they hunted this deer i think it's a deer an elk maybe an elk an elk or a deer that they weren't supposed to and now they're being haunted by it nothing but black and teeth is definitely gonna go in i'm not gagging it's about this group of people that go to a haunted house in japan for a wedding and they get fucked up it's it's just steeped in way too much purple prose it, it was bad 
Bunny by Mona Wad is going in Not You, You Can Choke. I truly despise Bunny. I just said I don't like weird lit and this is like the queen of weird lit. Like it's so fucking weird. The main character is this girl going to a writing grad school program and there are all these popular girls in her class that always call each other Bunny. And at the beginning of the school year, they invite her to join them and they have just a lot of like weird rituals. It's, it's not an easy book to explain because it is like the pinnacle of weird lit. Our Last Echoes by Kate Alice Marshall. I know that Rules for Vanishing got to be in a higher category, but this one, she does not. She's going in, I'm not gagging. I don't know if I would have liked this back when I read this one. This one just because of the memories and enjoying it and the general premise, it gets to be up here. But this one, I did not even like the premise. It's about this girl who goes to an island because her mother went missing like many years ago and she wants to find out more about her. So she goes to this island that's like haunted. There's like a spooky fog. I don't know. There's like a random romance in it that I really didn't enjoy. All right, House of Hollow is going to go in You Are Good, I'm Waiting For You To Be Great. Not because I disliked it, but because I felt like it could have been slightly better. This is a young adult book about these sisters that went missing when they were kids and then they showed up a couple years later and basically had to integrate back into their lives and ever since they came back things have been like really weird and at the start of this book one of the sisters has gone missing again and so they need to like find out what happened to her. I did like it but I think it would have been better if it wasn't young adult so that's why it's gonna go in that like slightly lower category. Goddess of Filth is going to go in It's Not Bad It Just Needs a Little Shaping. I really did like this book. I just thought it was way too short. The pacing was a little bit off. It is a possession story that's kind of like a good for her. I think it would make a really good movie. It kind of feels like the craft meets like the exorcism. When the Reckoning Comes is going in. Um, it's I would want to put it in it, I'm not gagging but I think there was like good aspects of it I just didn't like it. I rated it like two stars so I'm gonna put it in it's not bad it just needs a little shaping because I think the pacing was the biggest issue in this book like the first half is really interesting and then the second half really falls off this is about a black woman who grew up in a really small racist town and there is a plantation that they've converted into a wedding venue and one of her white friends is getting married there and then it's being haunted by like the ghosts of, like slaves and stuff and i think the concept was super cool but the execution itself was kind of boring the final girls support group by grady hendrix is going in not you you can choke i really don't understand anyone who likes this Grady Hendrix. I think it's his worst by far. It is about all of these women that are kind of based off of like old like horror movie final girls and they're all being hunted down by a serial killer. I think Grady Hendrix was a little bit too focused on the gimmick and not enough on the actual story. Hex by Thomas Old Huvelt is going in I'm Not Gagging. This book was so long and boring. I'm sorry. It's about this town that is haunted by this ancient ghost of a witch that they killed like many, many years ago. And it's a really cool concept and I liked the writing initially. There's no need for this book to be as long as it is. So unfortunately, I am not gagging. Blue Foot by Braum. Hmm. I really liked this, but I think I'm going to put it in You Were Good, I'm Waiting For You To Be Great because I wanted more from it. This one is about a woman named Abatha, I think, and at the start her husband dies and then her brother-in-law who is evil is like trying to take the farm from her because this is like a Puritan story where like women don't really have like a lot of rights and this demon in the woods makes a deal with her to help her like flourish her crops and whatnot. Comfort Me with Apples by Catherine M. Blente. Catherine M. Blente. Hmm, that's a tongue twister. Anyway, I'm gonna put that in. We did it, Joe. I really liked this. I don't think I gave it a rating on Goodreads because it's super short. It is a short story about this woman who's married to a man and she finds out that her like perfect life isn't as perfect as it seems. I don't really want to say more than that because it's very easy to spoil this. This Thing Between Us by Gus Moreno. I'm going to put this in. I'm not bad. I'm not bad. I'm not bad. It's not bad. It just needs a little shaving. I'm getting really tired doing this video. This is a cosmic horror haunted house type thing about this guy whose wife recently died. He's pretty sure that his like Alexa was haunted and like that's why his wife died. And so it kind of devolves into being like cosmic horror in the second half. Ugh, A Dowry of Blood is so perfect. I'm putting this right into We Did It Joe right away. I loved this book so much. Some might say it's not horror, but it is about Dracula and Dracula is a horror character. So I'm going to count it but this is a gothic tale about one of dracula's brides and she's basically writing him a letter telling him why she had to kill him and it's all about this like abusive relationship and like what went on like in their marriage and whatever and i loved this book so much definitely think it could be considered more gothic than horror but i did love it so i had to include it especially because we needed some positivity because as you can see 
it's not it's not too positive here dead silence is going immediately into you were good i'm waiting for you to be great this book is one of my saddest experiences ever the first half is a complete five star experience for me and the second half is so bad the pacing really falls off the explanation of what's going on is so bad this is a space horror about this crew that is kind of like out in the middle of nowhere in space like doing this project and they come across this ghost ship and on it everyone has died so they go onto the ship to try to figure out why everyone died and all of their dead bodies are there like preserved even though it's been like over like 20 years our wise under the sea is immediately going in we did it joe i loved this book so much this is another one where i don't really know how horror it really is but everyone classifies it as horror it's actually really a story about grief and horror it's just kind of the vehicle for telling the story which would make you think that i would like pet cemetery i actually went into pet cemetery really excited because i was like oh maybe it'll be like our wives under the sea and then it it wasn't but this is about these two women that are married one of them is like an ocean i want to say oceanographer but that's that's not her title whatever she's like a marine biologist or something and she goes on expeditions under the sea and so she goes down on one of these trips and something happens and when she comes back she is no longer the same and so the other perspective is her wife and it's her kind of dealing with the grief anyway i loved it though i loved it the writing was amazing it, it was such a good time hide by kirsten white can go in uh not you you can choke that book was so bad so bad one star really bad it's about this group of people that are like competing in a game show to like win a bunch of money and they have to stay in this like amusement park that's abandoned daphne by josh mallerman can also go in i'm not gagging i was not gagging bird box is the only josh mallerman book that i have liked so far this one is just not great it takes place in the 90s it's about this basketball team basket is it a basketball soccer team basketball team i don't know they play sports there is this like urban legend about this woman named daphne and supposedly back in the day she's like killed children and then the town hunted her down and killed her and so now she like haunts the town but if you think about her too much kind of like bloody mary then she'll come and she'll get you the weight of blood is going to go in dnf i did dnf this a lot of people have been recommending this to me it's kind of a carry retelling it's young adult it's about this girl who is mixed and her whole life her father has been trying to like hide the fact that she is half black by like straightening her hair and whatnot and she is white passing but one day she's like in the rain and her hair starts to get curly and so people realize that she is half black it wasn't bad i just i didn't love it like if i had finished this this would probably go in it's not bad it just needs a little shaping i was just kind of bored and i'm already familiar with the carrie story because i've seen both the movie back in the day as well as the newer version of the movie with Chloe Grace Moretz. The Girl Who Loved Tom Gordon is another DNF. I did not love this book. It was a little boring. It's about a little girl that gets lost in the woods when she's hiking with her family. And the reason it's called The Girl Who Loved Tom Gordon is because she really loves Tom Gordon. He's a baseball player. And so a lot of this book is about baseball. It is boring. I probably DNF'd like halfway through because I could not tell where the story was going. I, I don't know. She was literally just wandering the woods for so long. And I was like, I simply cannot go further with this book. Episode 13 is going to go up into I, You Were Good, I'm Waiting for You to Be Great. I love, 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 loved the first like three quarters of this book. I would give those like five stars. The audiobook for this is so great. It's like a full cast of characters. It's kind of like a found footage book. It's about this ghost hunting crew that is filming a television show. And they go to stay in this house that is very well known for all these scientists going missing in the 60s. They were like doing all these experiments on people and something happened and they went missing so they're there trying to like find ghosts and the first like i said three quarters of this oh so good i literally would have given it five stars but then the last part like when they go down to the well like if you read it you, you're gonna know what i'm talking about did not like that did not like that at all but still really enjoy it like if you have books similar to that that i might like better would definitely like that recommendation okay then we have the vessel by adam neville i'm gonna put this in it's not bad it just needs a little shaping actually no i'm gonna move this up to you were good i'm just waiting for you to be great because i gave it three stars and i liked a lot of stuff about it but i felt like it just took a little too long to pick up it was a good length in comparison to no one gets out alive it definitely was a better length for me it kind of was like midsummer meets hereditary it's about this woman who's a caregiver and she starts working for this elderly woman and the woman is like evil but one day she brings her daughter to work with her because she can't find childcare, and the old woman like loves her daughter it gets weird like the, the old woman is like a freaky lady she's like really really freaky silver nitrate by 
Silvia Morena Garcia is gonna go in I'm Not Gagging. I know that a lot of people have loved this. I was not one of them. I read this for my Patreon book club. Me and my patrons all thought it was boring. I'm so sorry, we really did. We thought it was boring. It takes place in the 90s in Mexico and it's about this woman named Montserrat who is a sound technician for film. She basically has a run-in with like these occultists and there's like these like film rituals. Okay, Anna Dressed in Blood is a YA novel that I don't remember a ton about but I think I'm gonna put it in, it's not bad, it just needs a little shaping because I remember liking it because it kind of reminded me of the show Supernatural, like they were like ghost hunters. The Haunting of Hell House is gonna go in I'm Not Gagging. I know this is a cult classic. I thought it was really boring and I'm so sorry. It's about this woman that goes to stay in this haunted house with this like professor who's like trying to find the proof of ghosts. And so he like writes her and asks if she'll be like his like research assistant. And the whole point of the story is that you can't tell if the house is haunted or if she's just like going crazy. I was going crazy because I thought it was boring. I did not, did not like it. And then finally we have The Girl in Red by Christine Henry and I'm going to put this up in um, We Did It Joe because I really like this. This is a post apocalyptic that was really hard for me to say. This is a post-apocalyptic book. This girl is trying to get to her grandmother's house. It's kind of like a little Red Riding Hood retelling. Christina Henry has this whole bunch of books that are like retellings of like fairy tales and whatnot. Anyway, so she's like trying to get to her grandmother's house because she thinks her grandma will be safe from like the disease that's been like going around. I don't fully remember all the pandemic stuff about it. I know that I did read it before 2020 and that it was weirdly written in 2019. I bet after 2020 happened, Christina Henry was like, damn, did I predict that with my book? Okay, besties, this is the final tier ranking of all the horror books. So let's go through and figure out what I like and don't like. So this top row, let's see. I feel like what a lot of these books have in common is that they kept my interest and I thought that the pacing was really good. They all were just kind of like, not to say they were all action-packed because they weren't because I wouldn't say like a Diary of Blood is like oh my god action after action or like Our Wives Under the Sea but something about them was compelling to me with like the way the storytelling was done whether it was like the writing like I would say like these three right here have really good writing but then like The Girl in Red, The Patient, The Hollow Places etc like they all were just like a lot was going on and I enjoyed that. I would also say that would probably go for all of these books as well. Like obviously I did not love them enough for them to be five stars, but I did enjoy the pacing and just the overall like storytelling. Everything after this point, I don't really know how to explain it, but I think there's just something for me with like endings and pacing and whatever. Like a lot of these books, like I thought they were slow or there's something about them. I just thought the ending was stupid or like, the explanation of what was going on was dumb. I feel like I'm really struggling to come up with like what these books have in common. So if you watch this entire tier ranking, please let me know what you think they have in common because I feel like you guys are super insightful and you guys are just gonna do a better job than me. And also I'm kind of getting a headache right now. So I don't really, I don't really wanna continue thinking about this. My tummy hurts, my head hurts and I am not feeling brave about it. So I think we might end the video here. I know this is like kind of abrupt, but anyway, we have to stop filming because my head is just suddenly pounding right now. All around me are familiar faces. You guys were giving me great recommendations in the last video where I talked about like horror and trying to figure out what horror I liked. So I think you guys will continue. So leave all your recommendations down below. And if you've made it to the end and you enjoyed it, feel free to use the ghost emoji because of my little ghost card again. Also, before you ask, I will let you know this little like sweater set with little ghosty here and the ghost ghosties is from Hot Topic. I absolutely love it. It's so adorable. It's one of my prized possessions. I bought it a couple of weeks ago. Thank you all so much for watching. You're all beautiful. Have a nice day.